Tonight we are live at Buckingham Palace as part of a glittering royal reception featuring Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Harry. We are going to be meeting sporting and music stars as well as a former Prime Minister. Her Majesty is ready, so let's cue the trumpets. Hello and welcome to The One Show live from Buckingham Palace with Matt Baker. And the joy of live television is that Her <laughs> Majesty is not quite ready for the photograph yet. But let's just introduce you uh, to these wonderful faces that are just behind us. These are the young leaders from all over the Commonwealth. They have travelled from 52 countries to be here. And these are individuals that have made a real difference, haven't they? Yes, in, in all sorts of fields as well. In, in charity work, lots of entrepreneurs there, technology, medical research, all sorts of things. It's a very very, very impressive lineup. So earlier this week, Lucy met up with some of them. Lucy, come on in. Regal Siegel, we're calling her for Regal the night. Regal Siegel this evening. What was your impression <laughs> then of these fantastic young people? They are astounding. Their ambition is just phenomenal. Many of them have been working on projects since they were quite young. I know you gave a flavour of some of the projects. Some of them are entrepreneurial, some of, some of them are charitable. There is a guy from Bangladesh, for example, who, because there was no 999 emergency response service in Dhaka, set one up himself. Wow. He also runs a call centre to go with it. There's uh, a lady, a young lady from Ghana, who, um, finding that a lot of her, her peer group didn't, get to school because they had to walk eight miles there and eight miles back, actually built them bamboo bicycles and now provides thousands of bamboo bicycles. So the idea is that young people are best placed to come up with solutions for people in their community. And as soon as they have this platform that we see with the, um, with the Queen's Young Leaders, they use it in, in such a phenomenal way and they grow and grow and grow these ideas and these organisations that they've built. And you know yourself that they've had quite a week here because yes. they get help at Cambridge University. Yes. They've been, they've been to the Houses of Parliament. Yes, they've been everywhere. They really loved going to Downing Street. Yeah, they yeah, really sure. enjoyed that. <laughs> they've had specialist advice from some of the greatest leaders and communicators that we have to offer and I tell you what they have taken in every word and I just can't imagine what they're going to do next. But Lucy just quickly how are the 60 young people chosen then because it's quite a rigorous process isn't it? it? It's an extremely rigorous process so they have to apply online next year is the is the final year of the program um, and then they're basically assessed by their peers so other young people from across the Commonwealth uh, they're very impressive obviously and then that goes to another panel um, from the uh, Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust who make that kind of final call so it's they are very very impressive and it's a rigorous process what? last year actually isn't it coming up that people can apply to be a Queen's Young Leader it's the last year coming up if you know somebody from across the Commonwealth who you think has got what it takes and it is a rigorous process, then encourage them to apply online, queensyoungleader.com. There's no apostrophe in the Queens, by the way. And it's quite a detailed application form because, you know, they're looking for very, very impressive people and they want you to tell them everything that you've achieved. Well, we um, hear that. Her, Her Majesty, Majesty is just entering into the ball supper room now. <laughs> already creating that wonderful smile that is going to look so good on these photos that are obviously going to be hanging on walls all over the world. Aren't? Well, there's going to be so many proud parents and grandparents this evening, isn't there? And there, you see, I mean, just look at the Queen who was just 26 herself when she became leader of the Commonwealth, just 25 when she came to the throne. And it's hard to believe that all these young people are between 18 and 29, so very young, and achieved so much. So now we're going to change up, and there's some VIPs that will be entering. We're expecting Prince Harry, Sir John Major, to join the photo, and the Duke of York. And Here they are, come. Right on cue. <laughs> and, I mean, this is absolutely right up Harry Street. It's all these inspirational youngsters. So much of his work inspire the next generation coming through. That's the thing, Alex, because, I mean, the, the energy that is in this room is really quite something. And, Alex, yourself, you, you've made a big difference here in the UK. Just give us an idea of, of why you've been on it today. So I think, like lots of people watching this at home, we've all experienced bullying, and we know exactly how it made, makes you feel. I experienced bullying. I decided to do something about it. I created anti-bullying ambassadors, young okay. people yeah, who... How, how does that work? So these are anti-bullying ambassadors are young people that stand up for themselves and others and support each other. And there are now over 20,000 anti-bullying 
homeschooling ambassadors in 3,000 schools across the UK 20, and Ireland. 20,000? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's an incredible feat, isn't it? And yourself, Rihanna, you've been working with individuals and families who, who suffer with dementia. So how does your initiative work? Yes, that's correct. My grandfather passed away with dementia in 2013 and it was a very traumatic time for me and also for my mental health and I got the feeling that mental health is very important and it needs to be stressed more. So in 2016, I launched Dominica Dementia Foundation. We do a number of things, but um, what we include is group counselling and one-on-one -on -one coaching with the families and caregivers. And it seems very, very creative, yeah, that's what doesn't I was about it? Yeah, to say. Lots of dancing going on as well. <laughs> yes, we do do dancing. We do salsa and art therapy at elderly homes and with the families themselves to elevate um, persons with dementia and their mood. The familiar face of the Commonwealth. But there are many more new faces hoping to make their mark on the Commonwealth too. 22-year-old Winifred Selby is co-founder of the Ghana Bamboo Bikes Initiative. Students who walk eight miles to school and then eight miles back are making 16 miles every single day. Wow, 16 miles just to get to school. Yeah. So I said, what can I do to solve this problem that will empower these children for them to go to school? It was there I realized that bamboo can be used for bicycle. Why don't I take advantage of this raw abandoned material, add value to it to address the transport need, which will also create employment opportunity for these girls. How many people has your bamboo bicycle project affected? I can boldly tell you it is more than 2,000 students in Ghana. What's next for bamboo bicycles? As of now, we are trying to develop electric bamboo which is going to um, charge mobile phones whilst you're riding. And then in future, we can do bamboo ambulance. So you are going into phones, ambulances. <laughs> There's no stopping bamboo. this. 25-year-old Carrie is battling gender equality back home in her country. In the Solomon Islands, it's very challenging for women like, to be heard. What have you done to enhance women's rights in the Solomon Islands? I work with young girls and uh, single mothers, making positive change in their life. It works through basic media trainings. It's a project called uh, Digital Storytelling, where it involves photography, audio, clip, and text. So everything combined, and you make out a story out of it. So you teach them to become storytellers about them, yes. themselves and their own life? Yes. And what sort of transformation do you see? A lot of women, they had uh, low self-esteem, mm -hmm. and when I like support them through these trainings, they are really empowered. I feel like I'm really making a change in the community. What does this mean to you, to be a Queen's young leader? This is the biggest achievement in my life, and I really appreciate that. It's like a proof to my country that even though girls are not heard, I can show them that mm -hmm. I've won this award and girls can do the same thing. It's one of the most prestigious things I have ever encountered. It always gives me motivation and it pushed me to go extra mile. Go the extra mile. Is, is that your slogan? Oh it's yeah. It's true, true of a bicycle, oh, right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and you. <laughs> it seems the Queen's leaders have some big champions oh, supporting yeah. them too. We're going to have to do a selfie. A selfie. Yeah. What do you think these guys will take back from this experience? I think what they will take from it is they're being recognised for what they do. Uh, and that's so important because what they are doing is so great. A team hug. <laughs> we can do a team hug. Thank you so much. These welcome. young people are seriously impressive. In fact, we could well have some future Commonwealth leaders among them. Earlier this evening, Her Majesty the Queen and distinguished guests gathered to greet the young leaders. In the Palace Ballroom, each was presented with a medal to take home, something they'll treasure forever as they continue their remarkable work. Well, we were saying, what a week to... Yes. Well, I've been searching for those illegal dump sites and I've also been going through the leading change course and trying to implement what I've learned into my work. I am absolutely delighted to be in London because it is thanks to the London Paralympic Games that I got into Paris. 
spot and this is basically what got me here today. Um, so it's absolutely great to be here. So London was what really lifted the Paralympic Games? Yes, yes. And I mean, I watched the London Paralympics and uh, it was just an inspiration for me. Um, it was a huge celebration of human spirit and uh, basically that's what got me into Paris sport. This, this award ceremony to be the best um, part of the whole trip, but I've absolutely That's a good loved thing you said. Yes, <laughs> but I've absolutely loved every part of it. Good, fantastic. And you guys, you were up in Cambridge we were up in for Cambridge. a few days, and then, then you've been in London, and the whole week has been yes. memorable, I hope. Cambridge was an intellectual retreat. It was, it was great. We got to meet loads of recruitment. And bear in mind, you're all from three different countries. What makes this whole thing so special? Just meeting all of the other um, exceptional young leaders as well. I think it's really good. And meeting all the, all the tutors that we have been seeing online so far. And also getting a good places like the BBC and Facebook. That's, a, that's, that's I mean. really good. You're all you guys doing your work now. You've been recognized for it. And as I said next door, this is where it starts. Now you've got to start inspiring everybody else, a whole younger generation. We've got a billion people under the age of 30 in the Commonwealth to choose from. Let's start inspiring you, yeah? That was well done. Amazing. And Cumber, Sir John touched on, on your work with women. It's very much focused around engineering and science for you. So what are you getting out of this in seeing so many young women like yourself getting involved in that work? Yes, yeah. well, first of all, um, at my place of work, there are 37 engineers, yeah. and, and this is Sierra Leone. Sierra yeah. Leone, and I'm the only female engineer, and to me, that's scandalous, because that means the ideas, the capabilities, are all being missed in all the creative, innovative things that have been developed, yeah. and to me, that is just unacceptable. It should be the, the gender gap right now we're experiencing in science fields. It's just ridiculous, and for me, having more women participate actively in these careers will lead to transforming the nations, improving the living conditions, bringing about sustainable development to my country. That is what I want. So what sort of Gets response? You in politics, yeah, exactly. you are, as you can see, there's a lot of passion there. <laughs> there is an and it's the same with all of them. If, yeah. if you talk to them, you'd be astonished at the things they produce. And have you had a good response to that? Have you had lots of women coming forward wanting to do it? it the response has been amazing. Great. Especially from the students, because I'm dealing with primary school school girls and for now I have 50 mentees who want to pursue science careers for me if I get those 50 I'm good You're I'm happy. sure yeah I'm sure good to get more but with those 50 for now I am great well come back on that note we will say thank yeah. you so much thank huge you. congratulations and huge thank congratulations you. to everybody here absolutely